if you actually analyse the lyrics of most um, uh, pop, pop music songs, apart from the straight love ones, but the ones that go into the more mystical territory, they're talking complete and utter crap. <laughs> I mean, you know that. And, 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 and you ask the person, well, tell me, you know, your song called um, The Buddha's Stone of Love in Jehovah, um, what, 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 what did you think this was about? And they go, well, it's kind of this uh, emotion when I, I was sort of like, mm, yeah. <laughs> and they go, mm. and you know, it, it's, it's um, they get away with it because the music that they're making is so simplistically emotional that everyone just goes, oh, great, you know. I mean, they, they, it doesn't matter that it's crap because they feel good when they listen to it anyway. And so that's why we make the effort now to, uh, to really let people know what is behind it. presupposes that one can drop in at any particular moment in an artist's life and expect him to be really, really sort of elegant. Well, that is, no, it's not, that's that's not true. I mean, you can't talk about these sort of things all the time. <laughs> well, perhaps please you can. <laughs> but there's no particular reason why an artist should be able to explain and sort of be why sort of like... eggs on his head. <laughs> <or invaluable. laughs> about what he's doing, like 24 hours a day, especially when you've had no preparation and you're not even being asked questions. I mean, I haven't even revised. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure even Pablo Picasso, you know, sort I mean, of... I haven't listened to Gasology since we did it. Most of the time couldn't explain what Earth he was doing. Couldn't I? You run? The ideal way to do an interview is to, like, ring up the interviewers and say, quick, come round, I'm feeling very eloquent. And get to explain <laughs> what I'm doing at this particular moment. If you don't get round within, like, three quarters of an hour, you're going to miss I'm it. I'm feeling transcendent. I feel a poem coming up. Well, this is what they did, though, isn't it? Mm. Especially, particularly with poetry. I mean, poetry is a condensation of feelings, and any attempt to... Did you have to care very much about your image? Something? Not really. I mean, to a certain extent, I don't really give a shit, because you get into the pop star thing, sort of, can't go out, I haven't yeah. got my special black jeans on, and my, my hipster belt, and all my snakeskin yeah. boots and things. You know, we don't care about that. You can't help but make some sort of prejudgment about yeah. sort of seeing this person and sort of saying, well, they've got that sort of hairstyle, so the music must sound like that. Yeah. And which is something that you do in life anyway. I mean, you see someone and you usually have an immediate impression about what they might be like, which may or may yeah. not be true. But I mean, I've, I know that I've been in a record store, picked up a record which may have an interesting front cover, look at yeah. the back cover, see a bunch of fat hippies and go, well, this must be a load of garbage, you know. People mystify you very much. Mm, well, I mean, to to actually, you know, do something like this is like pretty much burying your soul or taking away any sort of mystique. Because I do like to proliferate a lot of false names and rumours, etc. Just so, to uh, decentralise the focus on some sort of rock personality or personality that you can is put your finger on and sort of, you know. I don't think that's necessary at all, and I don't think it, it educates the music at all. You know, you can be aware of it, but, you know, I hate the whole image sort of shtick. 
really, and uh, I don't think it's necessary or anything like that, you know, which isn't to say that I can't act like a total asshole if I want to. <laughs> music for an easy way out, just for enjoyment of the most shallow and, and tedious type, really. The, the problem with Western music is, contemporary Western music, is that it offers, offers nothing except shallow pleasure, um, petty enjoyment, and the promise of dancing the night away and drinking, fucking, picking people up, all completely pointless things to do. Uh, Western music used to have something important in it, if we look at, back at the classical composers, but even the classical music of the West now can't offer anything to people because it exists in its own sphere. It's um, a finished sort of music. I mean, everything that matters has been dead. And you only have to walk, walk down the street and you watch the people walking along who are just, their, their shoulders are bowed with defeat. They realize that they're living completely meaningless lives and that there's nothing, nothing for them to look forward to. They kill themselves by the admission of their defeat, by refusing to explore, by refusing to question. They want the easy life, the easy option. They want to be left alone to carry on doing what they're doing, which is always nothing whatsoever. And I think it's easy to get sort of too perhaps arrogant about it and say, well, they should be doing this and they should be doing that. But I'm not saying that, therefore, if people want to get out of this problem, that they've got to do this or they've got to do that or this is the answer, that's the answer. Perhaps the only, only way out is if you actually go up to them and give them a good kicking and say, why don't you fucking wake up? I think people expect, when they think it's a band, they expect automatically they can identify with the people on stage and look up to them and think they're good, you know, good people or something. But uh, I think it's important that we manipulate these roles and that we're not always just the good guys, you know, that we take a role and really 
push people's understanding and make them think about the situation of a concert, how they're consuming this culture, how they're passive, how they're being dictated to. Uh, because I think any performance by any group is part of a political structure and it, it, it holds up the whole system. In other words, the whole industry and record companies and everything. things which we hope directly inspire people so we will work on themes that are, are, are very positive and uh, but always at the same time we like to show people what they're up against because there's, there's no point just uh, uh, inspiring people with hopeful rhetoric with uh, with an inflated language that means they, they walk away after that and find that nothing has changed or that, that they still haven't faced up to to what they're up against, because without a doubt, certainly in Britain, uh, the right wing still have the power. They have the power of all of the institutions. The the people who hold the people who hold the strings of democracy, the ones who uh, operate behind the scenes, uh, the power that was is within them has not been challenged by the ideology of the left for a long time now in Britain. And so, part of our process is understanding the effect that they are having and making people come to terms with it. And to do that, you must show the full weight of power that lies with the opposition. And so it would be irresponsible, as it is often on the news or in the media, to show that power, but always to contain it. They, they never show the full um, effect of the way that the establishment operates because things are very filtered within a, in, within a democracy, particularly within Britain. The, the decision-making process is very hidden and the actual effect of what is being done in the name of democracy is, is it just slips through with a sugar coating. And so we try to, uh, in taking the side of the opposition, we really, really try to show the, the true emotion, the true face of, uh, of the establishment in action. The new LP that I've just completed is a concept LP all about oppression and the various forms of oppression, trying to itemize them and, you know, as a result, you know, a analyze them and see how it can be sort of escaped from, starting off with a uh, kind of personalized oppression which one imposes upon oneself through various forms which are sort of intangible a lot of the time and it might be something physical just because of your makeup how, how you have to how you have to handle things and thus oppressing yourself to like the sort of a oppression that an environment can impose upon you uh, which is also kind of intangible because you don't know whether you're succumbing to the environment or you know whether the the environment is imposing that upon you to uh, a sort of 
the oppression that can be imposed through, you know, governmental restrictions or like, you know, being thrown in a concentration camp or something like that. Yeah. And trying to offer some sort of way out in the end as a positive statement, which is basically I can do any goddamn thing I want. Uh, and it's portrayed in a fairly uh, willfully violent way, but as a, more as an expression, which is a total reaction against all that oppression. <laughs> not interested in just uh, a form of escapism like most entertainment because uh, I mean this this in a, in a way is the most effective form of propaganda is uh, you know um, escapism entertainment which uh, allows people to completely forget their problems I think it's a more effective way to achieve a positive feeling if you can work through the worst you know the worst realization of what is oppressing you and then come through that on the other side then you've really then you've really moved forward You're genuinely going to try and change people or make them uh, you know face up to something which is quite uh, an awkward thing to try and do anyway there has to be that area of confusion where you break the mold of the past and look for a new pattern and that confusion is part of the process if it was on a plate if it was just like uh, well this is good this is bad you believe in this you don't believe in that I mean, so, so fucking what? You know, you yeah. might as well go out and read a book on, um... Noddy. <laughs> <laughs> if you ignore all, most contemporary uh, 
corrupt sources and go back to like the surrealists, you know. Yeah. I mean, what they were dealing with was the, the subconscious on a personal level and expanding it and just plummeting the depths of it. And that's just a very simple act which takes a huge amount of effort and has amazing consequences if you can do it. You know, it's just sort of unleashing something. People don't know how to do it. Yeah. And that's what we are aiming for in some respects. Yeah. And people seem to think it's sort of, um, sort of egotistical and introverted to take such an extensive interest in your own mental workings and capacities. I don't think that's true at all. I think it's more of an arrogance to believe I mean, that you ever understand someone else. Everybody else is. Yeah, I mean... You know, I don't know my own particularly. I want to know more about it. You can never really know what other people are doing. and things like I've kept a diary of all my dreams of every night for the last five years. You know, I'm not quite sure yet what purpose it serves, but it's a unique record as far as I'm concerned. If only as a source of imagery as well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, for writing. I mean, um, you couldn't even say that you got to know yourself better through it because it churns up such strange things, you know, you just can't make sense of it. That's what I like. You sort of utilise the chaos that we propagate and generate chaos, not in a sort of punk anarchy way, but mental chaos. As we were saying before, we, we believe that states of delirium and, and sort of self-induced madness, whether it be from LSD or schizophrenia, which you, you know, invoke and make worse. You know, I, I actually believe that, that you can strengthen yourself through those things, like putting yourself through it. Yeah. Next on stage, gentlemen, here's Joey. wanted to look for a message in our music you know an overall sort of thing it would be that you just have to uh, go through your individual visions whether they be Hitler or uh, Bosch you know Bruegel or something because it's only by plowing into yourself I think that you can get anything worthwhile yeah. turning away from outside influences yeah. you spend so much energy shutting out and filtering everything records and TV and that. So I just can't listen to the radio, I makes you feel physically ill. musics of the world don't have to offer anything. They don't have to offer imagery, ideas. They just have to exist. They have to put forward the sound that they make, and that is enough in itself. 
they don't have to go on and on about how strange they are, how weird this is, how progressive they are, how different they are investigating things which have never been told of before. But the West doesn't realise that there's a whole culture that is, was thousands of years old when we were still running around with mud on our faces. And we look at these cultures and sneer at them, but they have everything to offer and we've got nothing left except our, the corpses of an entire civilization. over and there's just nothing left for them and the sooner people realize that come to terms with the fact that the civilization is dead the sooner they'll be able to get out of it and start building something up and learning from other people and building something new and fresh but as long as people are crippled by the illusion that they're part of something important something which has died a long time ago there's just no hope for them yeah. but, but they're the only people that can do anything about it yeah so that's why you were leaving for India, end of this summer? Yeah, basically it's... I was born in Asia anyway, and having lived in England and a couple of other places in Europe, although it's pleasant and easy, there's no challenge. And I think that the closer you are to corruption, the quicker you get corrupted yourself. So by living in a culture which is morally and spiritually corrupt, you start to come like that yourself you know you catch the disease very easy and yeah. it becomes very easy to sit back yeah, so right. I mean for me that's what I'm going to do I go to India to study Tibetan language and Tibetan religion Tibetan medicine but obviously it's not saying that this is what everybody should do it's just yeah. I suppose it's just it's my, my, pers yeah, it's my yeah. personal way of running away from it because fuck knows I can't take it anymore so that's who's going to India is he going to go and meditate on a mountain well I don't know <laughs> Maybe, yeah. yeah. I don't know, I don't think I'd find better atmosphere in a different it's culture, a different culture yeah. necessarily. I'd rather mold the culture that I've got around me and m mirror it. I think, fight against it or, or, or leave. And mm. he, he decides to leave. Mm. So you, you well, I'm more, decide yeah. to I'm more into like molding an environment which is around me or analyzing it and see what's bad about it. I don't think you have to be restricted to any one city or any one form. Basically, you're the master of your own destiny, but I don't choose to, like, take a, a grand new cultural input, like something as drastic as going to India or something. Um, because I like, I like the trash culture of the West. Yeah. Um, I embrace that as well. I think it's great, and I think, you know, that's what's so great about America, because it's the... It, it acknowledges that, yeah, it acknowledges pure um, glorification of trash and uses that as a starting point culturally, saying, you know, okay, we love trash. So, um, you know, what, what are the alternatives from there? And a lot of people are sort of mirroring it, where in a place like England, they, uh, they have some sort of pretension that um, their culture isn't trash when it is total trash. And so that, that's totally uh, pretentious if you, if you sort of 
watch, you know, like a really populist medium like TV. I think the quality in America is much better just because they, uh, they embrace trash so much. And, you know, that it's an art form. Whereas in England, they have some sort of pretension as if, as if they're not making trash, which they are, I mean, and a, which makes it more, all the more trashy than America. tour that I've ever done and uh, what I'm sort of observing at the moment is that the whole fetus phenomenon is almost becoming like uh, not so much self-parody but I'm very aware of the rock elements in it and I'm embracing that at the moment and the greatest manifestation of that is to do a tour once I've done that I don't feel the need to repeat myself and do another tour or carry on going album tour album tour or anything like that you know it's uh, you know I want to make a definitive statement once I've made it what do you do make another definitive statement I guess but um, I don't, I don't want to repeat myself I mean the world, you know how many rock LPs does the world need <laughs> To remain, uh, maintain a, a separate identity. It's so fresh, this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we admit it. You know, we're not saying that we're unique and special and we have, you know, this amazing talent and everyone else should listen. Because we're not saying that at all. We, in a sense, we're being tarred by our own brush in this condemnation. But, you know, I'd rather have that and have the ability and have the, the time to, to work in isolation, you know, get on with what we really believe in. time we've st stood in front of a video camera and, and said these things we've had numerous opportunities 
offered to play huge festivals in Holland and in America. We've been offered to play the Palladium, which is like the biggest nightclub there at the moment. We just say no. We get this perverse pleasure in turning these things down in a way. But we don't. We don't want to dilute what we think we have by sort of either compromising it in a live situation or becoming just another little marker in the marketplace. You know. If you don't play the game, if you don't play the accepted rules of uh, of marketing and of production of material and of uh, the, the right connections with the press if you try to make your own system which we do outside of all the disciplines in other words we're not just a pop band we're not a modern classical band we're not uh, you know totally anarchist bands we're not just producing films which can be screened in a cinema. We're not just working with playwrights who can write a conventional play to go in a West End theatre. We're outside of all these places. We don't fit in any of their rules. And they can't, it's very difficult for them to have the commitment or the courage um, or even the desire to break their accepted structures of uh, partitioning all these different areas. So we create problems for ourselves in this way and it takes a, you know we have to just keep trying one simple question uh, why did you come back from India um, well having got so pissed off with the West I decided to go and find my true will man in India and Nepal and when I got there having been there before I realized how much things had changed and the place was just crawling with hippies crawling with Western and Eastern hippies the Western of course being by far the worst and fake gurus Lamas, whose only interest seemed to be in conning as much money out of people as possible. Their main point of interest in this world seemed to be what sort of watch you had on. And the fact that most of the Buddhist monks I met, the young ones, all seemed to have guitars and play Jimi Hendrix all the time. I thought this is obviously not the place to be. <laughs> Thank you. 